On today's show, a fast food paper tray that's also a Bluetooth keyboard. A Formula racer drives around with a VR headset on and it's super awesome and dangerous. It's definitely dangerous. And also a little egg that you can live in off the grid anywhere in the world. Pretty weird. Not dangerous, but weird. Survive Daily. <laughs> citizens of the internet, welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I am Ashley Skeva. Join me as always, Kale Anonymous. It's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to Google I.O. tomorrow. So we're shooting, I'm telling you in advance, guys, we're shooting two shows today. So, so you're live right now? No. I mean, tomorrow? Tomorrow I'll be live. So when we say, okay. So tomorrow's episode, I will be in two places at once, technically. So you're spoiling that Tomorrow, we're wearing the same underwear as we're wearing today, essentially. Spoiler alert, guys. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, which spoiled also, underwear alert. Number one headline of the day today. But, uh, but we do have more, so let's hit it. Fun facts about Tomorrow Daily. We're really, <laughs> we're really losing our credibility with the underwear story, but yeah. That's, that is yeah, true. Okay. All right, so what do you got? All right, let's talk about the Eco Capsule. Um, I saw this and thought it was so cool and so strange, but also kind of what the future looks like to me. Like I think about things in the fu futuristic things and it feels like this is a thing that is one of those things. Um, this is a little egg shaped house. This mm -hmm. is a house that you can live in. Uh, you can see the pictures. Uh, Producer Logan was kind enough to grab a whole bunch of pictures offline. And it is fully portable. It is powered by solar and wind energy and can capture and filter rainwater and dew. So basically you can live completely off the grid. It is about 14.6 feet long, which is 4.5 meters long, 2.4 meters wide, and 2.5 meters tall. So it's about eight feet tall. So it is really a little egg shape. Here's the interior. It has a folding bed, a table, two chairs, a little kitchen, a toilet, and a shower. So pretty much everything you need for basic living. Uh -huh. It has some storage space. Um, so there's some storage space that you have available to you, and uh, and some and there's like two windows. So you get a couple windows, and uh, so the solar power actually charges an onboard battery. So even if it, there's a cloudy day, you can pull from the battery. Okay. So you good. can you can say you can har harvest and store energy on a sunny day. So for those cloudy days, you'll have energy. Um, and architects are saying that it can support somebody living off the grid for almost a year. Just wow, pretty great. Oh yeah. Pretty cool. Except for they have to get like food and stuff, but whatever. They do have to go get food, but not water, because if you have, well, depending on where you are, but if there's rain, it can convert and filter rainwater and dew. So it can capture Mountain Dew? Water. Not oh. quite Mountain Dew. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is it's really cool. It's kind of a really neat, sustainable off-the-grid house. Uh, and they were saying that you can ship it, you can airlift it, you can tow it, you can even it can even be pulled by a pack animal. So you could have like a couple of burrows pulling that thing down a path. That's good. I got lots of burrows. It's, I know so, you have a lot of donkeys hanging around. So they're hoping that this is, it's, they're, the, the aim is this is for vacation and or living off the grid. Nothing mm -hmm. nothing really else. Not like, oh, exploring other planets. or Because like, I mean, obviously it's not like in, in Yeah, no, for, I, don't, I don't think it's for anything. Or like harsh conditions. Like it's not. I would imagine it's not like rated to survive like a tsunami or something like that. I, I would imagine it'd be the same as any other house. In fact, maybe a little more dangerous because it's not like on a foundation. Right. It's not hooked to a foundation. Okay. But it sleeps one person? It sleeps one person. So it seems like it's a really great thing for somebody who wants to maybe do some adventuring, live off the grid, check out places of the world that maybe they want to live in uh, for up to a year. Um, and uh, and I, I like that it is eco-friendly, live off the grid, you don't need... Uh, a lot of you know extra power in here, your cool. solar right from the sun. I saw they had a toilet. Yeah. What's the deal with that? Well, I'd imagine it's the same as an RV, same type of thing as an RV. So you got a little, yeah. There's a little toilet on the top left corner, and then it goes where? Well, there's a usually it's like an RV. So I'd ima I would imagine because they haven't unveiled it officially yet. It's mm -hmm. going to get unveiled at this event called the Pioneers Festival in Vienna, uh, like, like this week. Mm -hmm. And um, but I would imagine it's like an RV where you have like a tank and then you have to empty it safely. Uh, you can't just dump it anywhere you want. Right. Um, but yeah, there's. I would imagine you have to you have to pump it the same as an RV. Okay. So it's a little bit of a learning curve. It's obviously they haven't released the price. They do want to take pre-orders later this year, and then they want to ship them sometime next year. So yeah. this is like something that they're hoping to bring to market very very soon. Um, and uh, they haven't announced a full price for it, but they did say shipping would be about twenty five hundred dollars to New York. 
So if, but then again, I mean, for me, it's like, why would you want to ship this thing to the States? Like I would want to pick it up in like Vienna and take it to somewhere remote. Like mm-hmm. there's not a lot of whole, there's not a lot of real remote places in the U.S. Like you're not, you're going to be living off the grid. It's like mean, desert and that's about it. Desert and maybe like some parts of Montana are probably pretty remote. Like there's some, some maybe not farmland sure. fields, um, things that are remote, but not, there's not a whole lot of remote places in the U.S. Um, and I would imagine a lot of the remote places are places you would not be able to take that thing and live off the grid, like like national parks. You can't mm-hmm. just ride that thing up the mountain and start staying there. So, uh, but I thought it was really cool. And I, I thought about, I saw so many people talking about this online um, and I wanted to talk to about it with you guys and you and use it as our hashtag of the day, which will be TD Eco Cap. Um, and uh, I want to know, where would you live if you could live anywhere in the world in this thing? Like, where would you take it? Where would you live off the grid for a, a year? Like, if you if they said, okay, we're going to pay you whatever you make in a year to go live off the grid somewhere, like all of your expenses are covered and you're going to live off the grid, like, where would you go? I wanted to live in Chernobyl, but that doesn't... You, well, I don't, you could, it can't um, protect itself from anything. It does seem a little bit dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't like, know, the, I don't know the Savannah? Go Savannah, hang out okay. with some animals. All right, I like that. I, I don't I don't know how this is any different than actually having like an RV with solar panels on top of it. Per well, it's se. much smaller. Okay. Um, so it's a small there's one, no a small engine. RV with no wheels. Yeah, there's no engine. Well, there's okay. wheels, yeah. but there's no engine. Yeah, one. Okay. Well, that's my answer then. The Savannah. Mm-hmm. The Savannah. Okay. I would say. I kind of like the idea of like living, in a like the mountains in like Bavaria, like a, the mountainous kind of areas. Nice. We'll live in a nice area like that, get nice views, mm-hmm. good weather, probably like okay weather, get a lot of enough rain, but enough sun to sort of sustain the, the solar and wind power. It's also wind powered, so maybe some, some windiness would be good. But yeah, I would say like around there, I, I, I seem like, I feel like I would like that. But where would you live? Where would you take it? Where would you, where would you live off the grid for a year? It's, or, you know, if you really hate this thing, tell us what you hate about it. Tell us what's not gonna work about it. Um, but yeah, TD Eco Cap, it's an eco capsule. You can find it online. Um, I think it's cool. I, I really like it. But uh, tell me about this driving thing because it sounds insane. It's not. It's actually really boring. So we're moving on to the next story, which is... No, we have to talk about your I'm story. I'm just kidding. Though. It's not I boring. Know. So you you know that people are just scratching the surface of what can be done with VR and people are just trying all different types of things. Well, Castrol is getting on top of this by uh, actually having a driver wear VR while he's driving an actual car so that he can drive in a simulated space. There's a lot of moving parts to this, including a, ju- a car, uh, a Mustang, what is it, like six, 680 or something like that. So it's incredibly dangerous that he's doing this. So let me, let me kind of outline. Okay. First of all, this is like an advertisement thing that they're doing, but it okay. doesn't make it any less cool because they put this looks two crazy. months of work to get this one video going. All oh, right? wow, look at that. So uh, they asked the Formula, uh, Formula Draft Driver Matt Powers to drive his R- R- Rush Stage 3 Mustang around a test track while wearing this Oculus Rift. Uh, they would simulate in things like falling rocks, cliff dropping, collapsing track, and more stuff while he's driving this actual car. Now, as you can see, they had to do a lot of programming because they basically had to turn the car into a controller. It's got uh, like light sensors on the front to see oh where he's God. moving. Uh, it reads his uh, acceleration, his oh. brakes. It reads everything. It's, he turned his car into a controller. He's he had to drive this many, many times to get used to the like VR because he said at one point he would turn and his head was turned a different way than it was oh, actually in the gosh, VR. I wouldn't even so there was a lot that. of stuff that went into doing this. Um, Powers said, the driver said, Virtual Drift was exhilarating and challenging like nothing I've ever done before. It's been awesome not being in, it's, it's been awesome not only being involved and testing the next generation of gaming technology, but also the possibilities that open opens up motorsports in general are mind blowing. So yeah, there you go. Uh, basically, you can go check this out. They, this is the making of video. They also have the official video that they made, but it's incredible to see that they worked two months to get all of it calibrated so that this guy didn't crash and die while making this <laughs> yeah. video. So it's pretty cool. It's part of a series called Titanium Trials. Uh, this is only one of many, um, but this is the one that had to do with virtual reality. We think this is really cool and also very dangerous, but very, incredible. I can't believe how they show this like virtual world and it looks like kind of a big disc that he's, it's, it's like a track, but it's, it's cra- it looks like a real weird future dystopia planet that you would see in like Thor. Like it's a really creepy, 
sort of landscape, and then he's in this amazing mustache. Well, what's Josh weird is they nice could have just had him driving around in the car and then simulated it like it looked like he was driving it. They're like, no, no, no. no. We <laughs> want him to be like, like look like it for him to look like he's in the virtual reality and make him drive a car at the same time. A real car. Really, he's the one experiencing this the most, but uh, just it, they wanted to overcome this hurdle and see if they could do it, and they, they did it. So you can I, go check out both of those videos. That is amazing. I love this, Titanium this whole trials. changing back and forth between the real world and like you can see exactly what he's doing in the virtual. Like yeah. how they're, oh man, it's that's totally so cool. We'll never be able to do this because we nope. can't drive, so no. there you go. Definitely anyway, so go not. check that out. Good job, Castro. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I love that story. Also, now I know what it would be like if anybody ever strapped on an Oculus Rift and tried to use it while driving, which seems like the worst idea. Ever. Two months. Don't Took do two that. months. <laughs> All right. Don't do that. Um, okay, last story. I'll make it quick. This comes from a German ad agency called Gut Webbing and Service Plan, and it's mm. called the Tray Typer. And if you've ever been to, uh, you get your fast food on, you get your little food tray, you don't want to get your smartphone, you don't want to get a bunch of grease all over your phone, that's all right, because they have these paper trays that have Bluetooth capability built into the paper so that you can have a little keyboard in your paper tray. What? What in the world? Yeah, they're calling it Tray Typer. There it is. You, all you have to do is you activate the tray and then you enter a password to connect it to your phone. And then as you're eating, you can go ahead and type on your little, type on your little tray and it'll type on your phone. And you can post to social, you can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, super weird, but also one of those things that, you know how when you saw it kind of old, oh yeah, and that, that was the other thing. They said 100% of people who got these at, at, during the promotional time they gave these out in Germany at KFCs, everybody took them home. They were like, I'm going to take this. Thank you. Yeah, free technology. Are you kidding yeah. me? Free Bluetooth keyboard. I guess the grease on the actual paper probably didn't matter to them because, you know, sometimes there's like... It looks paper. slightly plasticky a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look full. Well, it said there were paper, paper paper liners, but they probably, yeah, they probably had sort of a middle layer. Oh, this is it. so bad. It's like, it's so, so weird. You no, know, it's so bad because it's like we want people to stop eating fast food. And we also want people to like get their nose out of technology and like actually experience Not the world. Not these guys. And this place is like, yo, get fat, get get busy. Get technology, yeah, yeah, you can do both. Uh, the keyboard is 0.4 millimeters thick, so it's not thick at all. Uh, and it's super cool. The, the ad agency said it was a huge success. Yeah, They're it's like, super this is cool. A huge success. We they did some geolocation uh, kind of research on like where people use. They said that social went way up at these locations, at these KFC locations where they had the paper tray. So it was a very big success. Can you imagine though going into a KFC and then everybody's eating all their food and doing Just this? this? Like, yeah. um, 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 um. Well, I guess right That's now cool they're technology. eating their food and they're doing this, like they're looking at their phone while they're eating. So. Kind of yeah, similar. but a lot of the times I have to put my phone down. I'm just like, well, whatever. Food. I'll just look around and, oh, hey, that, you know, that's. Yeah. Now you there's can say a goodbye giant to that. elephant over there. Or something, but <laughs> no, some now you can walk an elephant right through a KFC and nobody will notice. That's true. That's a true story. Um, yeah, so Tray Typer. So weird, but also really cool. And yeah, I kind of am like, cool. I want to check it out. Like, yeah. I wish we had that here in the States. I think that would be pretty bad. And you definitely steal it. I would definitely take it home. It's it's a souvenir. It's a great souvenir. You take it home, you're like, look at this crazy piece of technology. I would bring it on the show if I could. If you live in Germany and you have one, send it to us. And we'll send it back. No, we but, won't. like, let us borrow it because I want to check you it out. You stole it, we're going to steal it too. Fair enough. So. Uh, so that's our headlines. Um, we're going to take a quick break. But before we go, you guys have to see this video. It's an art installation. You know how they always say, like, Tinder is kind of a meat market? OK. Then dating app is kind of a meat market. Well, they had these just these art students actually made a, a steak, a raw steak that swipes right on Tinder. So check out this video. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've returned. Uh, because we didn't have a show on Monday, I decided maybe we should do Back at Our Hackett today. So do you want to hear about something fun? Yes. OK, do it. OK, so some complaints about drones is that they're really fragile. Uh, they are easy to, like, if they crash, usually, like, you could have some real big problems. Um, and this is the Sprite drone. This is called the Sprite drone. And they're saying this is a really rugged, it's kind of weird looking, it's a really rugged, powerful, easy to use, and, uh, and prosumer-esque, like ha has kind of prosumer-esque gear on it, and it's a drone. So it's about the size of a thermos, like a large thermos. So it's not huge, but it is 
bigger than I thought when I had seen it by itself floating in the sky. I'm like, oh, this looks like it's the size of Genghis. No, it's a little bigger than that. So yeah, you can see how big that is right there uh, compared to the size of the guy's arm. And um, it's got remote controls. It has follow mode, so you can tell it to follow you. You can put, you know, tell it to tell it to follow you. There's the following you. And then uh, there's also a detailed app where you can program exactly, you know, where points of interest. You can tell it, oh, I want you to make this route on a map, which is kind of neat. Um, and yeah, it's really durable. So when it falls on the ground, you just go pick it up and uh, use it again. It's got two axis gimbal on it. Uh, they want you to be able to add accessories to it as they build uh, things for it. So they want you to be able to um, unscrew it in half and then add an accessory into the middle as like a middle ring accessory. Oh, nice. And then um, they have already fortunately met their goal. Uh, this is part of the app that we're looking at right now that says like, okay, the, here's where I want you to go. This is what I want you to check out. The camera on it's good. It's a 1080p camera. Um, they were saying they want professional, like they, they consider this a tool, not a toy. They're like, you don't need to bring, um, you know, if you don't want to bring a remote control, you can just use, you can program what you want it to do and you can switch out the batteries really easily and all this other stuff. So here, that's, this is the meat of the product itself. It's got a camera on there um, and it takes nice footage. Um, I would say just from what I've seen, the footage is not as stable as the DJI Phantom 3, the one that we saw on Intuit, Mike's uh, Phantom. Right. But, uh, but I would imagine that's because it, the Phantom has, it's a three axis gimbal. So there's the accessory thing you can screw on in the middle. So they're saying as time goes on, we wanna be able to add these accessories. Uh, they have already met their $200,000 goal. They've already mm -hmm. met it. They're, they've crossed it by about $13,000. They've got about 213K. Uh, 17 days left in the Kickstarter campaign, and how much would you pay for this? Oh, uh... Consider the cost of a drone. Like, the, the DJI Phantom 3 is starts at $9.99. Oh, you're so close. Good guess. It's $7.99. Okay. Gets you a, gets you a Sprite. Um, it comes with a free software, but no RC transmitter. So if you want one with an RC, the remote, the transmitter, yeah. you have to pay nine forty nine, which is only fifty dollars less than the Phantom. Right. So right. But this one's durable. Very rugged. It's really good for. It seems very outdoor, like outdoorsmen, yeah. people who are hiking and doing sort of adventurous things. Um, but I, I thought it was really impressive that they sort of put this together, and um, it seems like they're really. Uh, making something different, which I like. Yeah. I like different. I'm cool with the competitive drone market. Yeah. I, everybody, everyone wins when drones get competitive. Not with each other in the violence sense, but mm. mm. business-wise, right. everybody wins. I, I'm sorry for yeah. not clarifying that up front. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so Sprite drone, that's mm -hmm. what it's called. Would you back it? I mean, yeah, sure. I really don't have any investment in the whole drone world. Fair enough. Like, I, I, first of all, I don't have the disposable income to have a thing to if fly around and shoot video for me. I, that's that's not a. But super amazing. But if you did, would if you buy did, this or would you get a, like like a Phantom or a more traditional? Does the Phantom drone? one follow you too? If you tell it to? Uh, that I'm not sure of. But there are ones that do have follow modes. Okay. I'd probably do the the this one. Especially if they could get one that like you could periscope on too, so you could like go oh, hiking and like have people good. follow you or you know like that. walk around a convention and it flies and follows you around or something. So wise. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that. it's really clever, and I think you just changed my mind. I was gonna say no, but I think that if they can work out an accessory that would allow you to live stream, mm -hmm. I think I would do. You it. don't need a camera anymore. It's just you and your little sprite yeah, walking you can, around. You can live stream to YouTube on. Um, you can live stream to YouTube on the the Phantom. Like that's you can send oh, video out. Oh, so that's ahead. So yeah, okay. but I, I, I think this is right. I think that if you like drones and you're kind yeah, of an outdoorsy person who worries about crashing your drone and, and breaking it and making and spending a thousand dollars and making it completely inoperable with one you know minor crash, maybe this it's, is the drone. I, I think it's. I think this is a useful drone because there's different drones for different reasons at Very this true. point right now. So like the Phantom is going to get your beautiful sweeping city shots mm -hmm. and your coastlines. And this one's going to be like, let's go hiking. And then you can fall 147 let's hours or whatever, 487 hours and you're caught and it's just floating there and catching footage. And it well, makes then a the whole I was going to say, then the whole movie's already done. You mm -hmm. just sell the rights to your footage. And then all of a sudden you have a blockbuster Oscar winning film. There you go. Mm -hmm. Problem solved, guys. Problem solved. Unless you, in fact, die out in the middle of the desert, which would be bad. Somebody would definitely take your footage and get rich off of it. So I guess it's a win. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Sprite Drone. That's what it's called. Has about two, a little over two weeks left. So if you are so inclined, you have the extra cash in your pocket, go for it. Pretty good.
Um, okay, we got to talk about got to talk about cheaters. Got to talk about oh right. Got to talk okay. about yesterday. Okay, yeah. All right, let's, let's talk it. about your user feedback. So yesterday we asked. That's a really good one on on the YouTube. So I'm gonna get that one while you're. Doing I pulled this. some from YouTube. Oh, did you get? Okay, there's for yet for tomorrow two. too, because because we're gonna be at I/O. Oh, we're gonna yeah. do cheat cheaters we, for two you, days. You were gonna be at I/O. Because yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna do cheaters for two days. So today's today's user feedback comes from Tony. We asked you guys to say what should cheaters do to get back in the good graces, or should they be let back in? And Tony says they should be made to do the ghost pepper challenge. <laughs> I like that. Make them suffer. Too easy. A little too easy? Too Ooh, easy. Too easy, okay. Uh, Dustin wrote in and said, cheaters that repent should be let back in the game with stats reduced to beginner level for a clean slate. Uh, they wouldn't do it then. Yeah, I feel like they wouldn't do it because that's the same as buying a new yeah. account. It's yeah. Buying a new account. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I can't, I'm going to butcher your name and I'm really sorry because I think it is a lovely name written down. Remi Remigies? 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 I'm guessing, says, I agree with Kale, but they should also have an I am a cheat by their gamer tag. They should get like a scarlet letter next to their gamer I tag. I like that, actually. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that one. I like that, because then it's like you kind of know maybe something's up with this guy. Yeah. But then, you know, it's like wearing, it's like, you know, those parents who like punish their kids, put them, make them put on a sandwich sign that's like, I did this bad thing. Or those weird blogs that people are like, the dogs confessing to terrible things they've done. I like that. It's like that. It's like that, but with people. I like that. Um, you guys have really good ones. We have more tomorrow. We have like four more tomorrow. I pulled some from YouTube. I I braved the the canals of YouTube and I grabbed some comments. Boy, um, been, it's been a it's been a real muck fest over there. It's well lately, but there's some good ones in there. There's some really. That's what good I'm responses. saying. Is like when I find the, those people, I'm like, I will pull you from the muck. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> We'll Poor elevate people. you and take you away from this place. Um, so yeah, you guys had really good ones. Uh, we'll do cheats again tomorrow, and then we'll do the eco cap and tomorrow's hashtag of the day on Monday. Um, but with that being said, we got to talk about our very last piece of user feedback, which is always our photographer of the day. Aditya wrote us and said uh, that they took this picture with their Galaxy Note 4. And they said, wanted to share this photo, which I took using my Samsung Galaxy Note 4. It's a hanging bridge over the river Siang near a place called Tuting in Arunachal Pradesh, India. So you that's in better India. have walked that bridge. Tell me in the story it says. He didn't say. I, said, I hope you guys both like it. You guys a... rock. You, you better. If you haven't walked that bridge, you go back to that bridge right now and you walk that bridge. You walk across it. You know what I and like you to you don't think? fall in because if you don't fall in, you can't message us and tell us you did you it. You can't tell us you did. I like to think that he walked across to take the picture and then had to go back. Because maybe this is a better angle for the shot. Mm. I'm going to tell myself that to make me believe that he has crossed that bridge. Mm -hmm. He or she has crossed that bridge. But it's a really nice picture. Super lovely. And if you'd like to see a bigger version of it, you can hit us up on Tumblr. Because I have, I oh, post cameo? them there. I post the, every photographer of the day gets posted to our Tumblr. Really? It does. Every Why day. don't we have a lower third with the Tumblr? Because that'd be super do that. interesting. It's super easy. It's just tomorrowdaily.tumblr.com. Mega easy. It's Tomorrow Daily. We're Tomorrow Daily all over the internet and mm. your favorite social media places, but not Snapchat. Uh, and we are also uh, available via email. If you would like to send us an email and send in your photography, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. You can send in your user feedback if you want to. Uh, and like I said, if you hate so, if you absolutely hate email, you can find us on social media. Uh, we're Tomorrow Daily, mostly on Twitter, Instagram, kind of, and Tumblr. Yeah. And Facebook. Those are like the main ones, but we're on other ones too. It's a bummer you're not going to be able to periscope from IO. I'm going to try. No, you're not going to succeed. But I probably, succeed. yeah, I, the I internet will, is I not going to be great. I will bet you a bag of cherries. Bag of cherries. Okay. Yeah. I saw a guy selling fresh bags of cherries, like That's in what a I'm stand. Saying. Yep. I will pick some up. For okay, you but if it's I can. it's but you have to be able to stream for like more. Like it's not like if you can get the stream started. Five minutes. It 10 has minutes? to be like five minutes. Over five minutes. Without like some major lag. Major. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Bag good. of cherries on the line. It's, I'm in. And and don't forget to follow us on our personal Twitter accounts. I'm at Kale Anonymous. And I'm at Ashley Skeva. And also send people to TomorrowDaily.com if you want to share the show with them. That is it for today. We will be back tomorrow with a whole bunch of science fact and science fiction crashing in your face and being great. So until then, be good humans, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Same underwear tomorrow.